Hey, Trippy, come here, man. What you say? Trippy Congo just said the city government is hypocrites. <laughs> Did you just say that? Come here, say, tell me why, man. Why, why, why are you guys hypocrites? I don't have a mic. You can grab. You can. You can talk on my mic. I can, I can talk to your mic. All right, come here. Trippy, Trippy's going. to I mean, see, of community crossfire, we add lib. I, I want to. I want. I'm interested in knowing that. Uh, you know, we've been having some really good shows lately. About, and we got a really good show tonight. I have a, a doctor on who's going to be talking about. You can go over there and talk to me. I'm going to ask you some questions. Or you can sit here, whatever. Um, we're going to be talking about hypertension, um, uh, blood pressure, high, high blood pressure. Yes. Oh, oh, kidney uh, disease. Kidney disease. Um, kidney stones. Kidney stones. Um, that really affects our community, like, incredible. Um, I've been having some um, interesting shows on it. As a matter of fact, I saw the Kivas Gardner. He told me he calls the shows, and I saw my good friend um, Peter Guns. And um, I wanted to give a shout out to um, everyone who watches the show, because a lot of people see me and say, "Man, I watch the show all the time." Uh, and I was telling my brother Cisco, we call it meat and potatoes now. And I, and I, and I got a chance to watch Herm's show too, and, and I agree with Herm. Nobody needs to keep any pot steering on certain issues. Um, a lot of folks also watch this show because we talk about issues that no one else is talking about, or are talking about, but we kind of break some stories. Um, and I, I do want to give Nancy Willing a shout out because Nancy watches and she's always giving a shout out. But Trippy was going to leave, but Trippy made a comment and I, I asked him how did he feel about city council and the budget process and was the budget going to pass? So because we do get heartbreaking news, and Trippy was walking off. Before I go to my good doctor, I wanted to go to Trippy. <laughs> what, 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 what's the deal with the city budget, city government budget? And, and why did you say that you wouldn't vote for it and, and why? Um, I guess I just have an uh, issue with uh, passing a budget where you know, we on city council, we go through each department mm -hmm. and we just break them down. You know, why do you have to spend this much? Why are you spending this on this? Why do you, you know, do you really need this much money for this? And, and at, the, at the end of the day, we never present our budget to the people. Like mm -hmm. every budget, every department in the city is responsible for, for reporting their budget mm -hmm. to its citizens. But we don't do it, and the administration doesn't do it. So, so, so I, think, I just think that we're hypocrites. Like how can, we, how can we badger these departments for three weeks, and we won't, we, we, but we don't go through that same process? So, but uh, but I, I, I'm not following you. So you're saying city council don't have a budget that they present? We have a budget, but we don't present it to the people the way that finance, the police, the fire, audit, law, every, every department in the city presents their budget mm -hmm. to city council and, and of course to the people because it's aired live. You can watch it online also, but we don't do it. So you're basically saying yours is more or less like a secret, secret society. Exactly, exactly. Like and, a few and, and, it, and it's, you know, it's been bothering me ever since I've been on council. And when I, when I first realized what was going on, I asked about it. I was like, how, you know, how come we don't present our budget and how come the administration doesn't present their budget and just said it was a uh, an agreement that that um, I guess administrations and, and city council um, bodies came up with years ago way before anybody who was currently mm -hmm. on council um, you know was, was ever um, you know in government mm -hmm. but it's been it's just it's been a, an accepted practice for so long and I guess was with maybe the citizens, maybe with people in the administration, you know, members on council, it, it's okay, but it, it just doesn't sit well with me. Mm -hmm. That, the, we're, like, we're the only people in government that the people in the city voted for. Right. You know, so we're supposed to be a rep representation of, of them, and mm -hmm. why wouldn't we present you know, our budget to them? Is there, is there anything that stands out to you in the budget that mm -hmm. irks you? Or any, I mean, like, besides <coughs> you're not going to vote on the budget, but is there something that stands out you like, well, parks and rec, or, or, or public safety, or housing, or L&I, um, or anything that stands out. Um, probably, probably public safety. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty. I guess it's it's an unspoken um, truth that uh, you know public safety really abuses its time, and mm -hmm. public safety accounts for I think it's like seventy or seventy five percent mm -hmm. of of the budget, mm -hmm. and that's a, that's that's a you know pretty major pretty major piece, and and it's it's well known that that. Um, those in not of course, of course not everyone, but right. people in public safety abuse overtime, and, mm -hmm. it, and it just creates you know havoc on the, on the city's finances. Let me, let me, I, don't, let me, I don't know how I don't know how we get I don't know how we get a hold of that. I'm not going I'm sense. not going to hold you up, but okay. but I just really had to ask you this because I mean because you was walking out. Thank you for stopping. Mm -hmm. So what do you say, right? Because one thing I know about you, you and I had these conversations that you're really into youth. Mm 
right. you're really into you know helping you know, community right. base and some of the stuff in the budget is for community I mean like you, I mean so mm -hmm. when you vote against the budget I, know which, I, I mean people will say like well I mean if if you had a clever person who said well Trippy Congo voted against public safety he right. voted against youth programming he voted right, against right 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 you know, I guess I, that, I, that's I, the dilemma but at, at the end of the day I think I hope hopefully people know who I am mm -hmm. and what I stand for and I'm glad you gave me this chance to no, that's you know, cool. to be on here cuz I would never not support something that that's going to help you know a child or help a senior mm -hmm. or something that makes sense it's just it's just I guess I'm just trying to bring attention to things on like within within um gov within our government that nobody really speaks about. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's not it's not that I'm not supporting those those um those 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 um those programs. I just have to try to I have to try to send a message out there that we need to do better. Mm -hmm. That's all. And, and Trip, let me ask you a question. Do you get do you get a feel? I'm um, honestly speaking. I mean, again, people were watching. This was not rehearsed. I mean, mm -hmm. and, 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 I, and I appreciate you sitting down. Do you do you and also do you get kind of frustrated? Do you get a feel that the, the executive branch and administrative branch is like kind of Button heads. Oh yeah, definitely. Def I mean, and at the end of the day, you know, you know, I guess the people suffer because we could be doing so much more, like for, like you just said, for our children, for our seniors, for people who really need um, some help, and not only financially, um, in other ways also. Um, but it's just, it's just, it's a tug of war. It doesn't well, what, really what, what, where did it come from? Where, I mean, where, where I does it come from? I, I don't know. I can't, I can't really point. At a, I can't. I'm on, I don't want to say it's the mayor. I don't want to say it's you know. Um, Council President Theo or anyone on uh, on council. It's just it, it was even like this last time. You know, my la la last term it was the same thing. And I guess going in with a, with a lot of new council members and with the new administration, I was hoping that it wouldn't come to this. But it seems like you know, we're in that same place again, where just button button heads. And at the end of the day, it's not really about us. You know, it's you, about. It's and about and the reason why I ask you that, I mean, because I think again we could be straightforward. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was first got on, you had Jim Baker and Jim Seals, and I was like, wow, you know. I mean, I looked up to both these guys, yeah. and I was like, and, and I went and sat with these guys and talked to them. I was like, can you guys get along with me? I mean, mm -hmm. we got a, a, a black mayor and a, and a black city council president, and I mean, I guess you probably shouldn't get into that, but but, but yeah, I went at the there. End of the day, yeah, yeah and, and so yeah. I mean, do you, do you get that same kind of feel? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was. I mean, I was very frustrated, I, and I'm, I am very frustrated. I'm, I don't want to make it seem like I'm just, like, I'm a perfect councilman because I'm far from that. No, I mean, I have but my no, issues, you don't have to make it. No, but at the end of the day, it's, it's, let's just put that stuff to the side and let's do what's best for for everybody. Mm -hmm. Let's not let's not abuse like the power that the people have entrusted us with. Wow, so. thank you, man. I got to get you on an um, interview for a whole hour, okay. but but I, pre I appreciate that little bit of time. And and, and again, it, it was not trying to put you on the spot or. No, I don't, no, I, don't I mean, I, don't I thought. Mind. Well, I think you answered it. Honestly, mm -hmm. and, and I think that that's what we have to do. And you and I um, can joke a lot, and, and but honestly, I, I think your heart is in the right place. Mm, thank you. You know, and, 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 that, and that makes a, a lot. Even though you never voted for a doggone thing I wanted, but <laughs> never. But I thought your heart was in the right place. <laughs> I, I just quit asking you after like five years. <laughs> thank you, man. Thank you for All your right, time. Man, I appreciate we're, we're, it. We'll do it another time. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, um, let me go ahead. You can get up and walk, man. Yeah, you, you, we, we, we just we just wing stuff here, man. And, and how do you keep beating me, man? I feel like you know. You ever see that? Um, remember the girl was on All My Children's, uh, uh, and she kept losing every year to the same people. Susan Lucci. I feel like Susan Lucci. I keep losing to the Congo Hour. <laughs> let me give Nick Nick a shout out. Congratulations, Nick, um, for your vice presidency, uh, vice chairmanship. And I and I told everyone that was going to be a heated contested race between Theo and, and Greg. I mean, Gary Hutton, and I felt bad about that because I like both of those guys. Doc, how you doing? Good. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, I got an opportunity. I was talking to the good doctor. Um, I went to an um, India, Indian event. Correct. Um, and that same weekend, I went to a Nigerian event because I like going to different events, eating different foods, and, and, and getting into different cultures. And you and I start talking about High blood pressure. Correct. Yep. Hypertension, kidney stones, and things of that nature. Kidney diseases. Kidney diseases. Yes. Um, and you said it's very, very prevalent in our community. Correct. Yes. So, so is that is that like one of the? It, it, with that, it brings heart diseases and everything else. It, it is. Co it it has an association with heart disease. So you know, when our patients, when we see patients with kidney disease, the chances that they have underlying heart disease are very high. It's mm -hmm. almost a given that anybody with kidney disease on dialysis, if you look at their heart, you will find heart disease there. In fact, the commonest cause of death from kidney disease is actually heart disease. Mm -hmm. So once kidney disease 
sets in and patients go on dialysis, which is end-stage kidney disease. At that stage, the prevalence of heart disease just shoots up. Well, well, well I, when, you, when we talk about high blood pressure, yes. and, and, and I'm sure people are going to want to call in and talk to you about this, what is the, some of the main causes for high blood pressure, which is very prevalent in our community? Right. So, so firstly, it's genetic. There are, we've now, over the last 10 years, I think they've come up, we've found a lot of associations genetically based that link a higher incidence of hypertension in the Afro-American community. Mm -hmm. The second, I, I think there are several factors that again drive high, high blood pressure in the community. High salt intake, obesity, high prevalence of diabetes. Um, again, and, and then you add on to it some of lifestyle factors. Mm -hmm. Smoking, alcohol, again salt intake, uh, obesity, sedentary lifestyle, lack of exercise, all of those just culminate into driving blood pressure up. And, and what, what, what happens or what's some of the causes when you get high blood pressure? So with high blood, what's our worry? When, when, what's, what am I worried about? Because high blood pressure, you don't just know you have high blood pressure until you get it measured at your primary care physician's office. So you go in for your regular annual checkup and your primary care will notice that slowly your blood pressure is inching upwards, you know. Mm -hmm. When you were in the 20s, you were 120 over 80. In your 30s, you're 130 over 85. In your 40s, you're seeing 150, 144. And there's, you can see it coming on. Your primary care physician will warn you or tell you and, and educate you. Mm -hmm. All of us physicians are very much into educating and preventing and getting on this very early. Mm -hmm. But what problem is, it is a silent killer. You don't feel anything wrong with you. You tell yourself, I'm feeling fine. Right. And then we give, you, give the patient a pill. That makes them feel a woozy or gives them a side effect. And they say, I felt okay, but I got a blood pressure pill and I'm actually now not feeling well enough. I might as well not take the pill. Mm -hmm. The problem is you're now beginning to ignore the effects of high blood pressure, which will be effects on the brain, high incidence of stroke, a higher incidence of dementia on the heart, higher incidence of heart disease, on the kidneys. That, that, that could cause dementia also? Correct. I never knew that. Yes. So it's high blood pressure could cause high dementia? High blood pressure has, a, has an entity called multi-infarct dementia. So over the years of exposure to blood pressure will lead to dementia because of many strokes that they get because of high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So you really don't feel it. It's not like your arm stopped working or you got a stroke and the typical stroke that you and I think about, mm -hmm. you know, that you're paralyzed. These are very small uh, very, very small areas of infarction in the brain that slowly lead to loss of the brain mass. Mm -hmm. And as you lose brain mass, there's an onset of dementia. Mm. So, and then on the kidneys, the second most common cause of kidney failure after diabetes is high blood pressure. And together with diabetes and hypertension, which is high blood pressure, we have, when you look at 100 patients on dialysis, 66% of those have high blood pressure and diabetes together. Hmm. So, two-thirds of our patients who are on dialysis are coming from poorly controlled blood pressure and poorly controlled diabetes. Well, well wow, wow, that's neat. So, what's a preventative measure then? I mean, how do you prevent high blood pressure, hypertension? Excellent question. So, the first things are sit back mm -hmm. and think about it. Obesity. Mm -hmm. Watch your BMI. If you don't understand BMI, then look at your weight. I mean, if patients don't, we, we tell them what their body mass index is. But even when you look at weights, you know, we get to know we're, we're over, over the mark. But usually on your visits, the primary care physician will tell you, you're obese or you're morbidly obese, you're getting into a dangerous zone, you need to watch your weight. Mm -hmm. Weight is a big driver of blood pressure. As we gain weight, we also get sleep apnea, right? So sleep apnea, obesity. Um, <clears throat> so what we do is we then begin to educate our patients. How do you prevent this? That was your question. So we say we work on the diet. We want a very low salt diet. In fact, I also try and get pe people to think about portion control. And then ri right now with the emergence of so many diets, you can certainly pick a diet that will hmm. bring down blood pressure. That's interesting. But the primary issue here is salt, salt driven hypertension. If you look at um, if you look at African-Americans and you ask the question, what drives their blood pressure? 
it's usually fluid driven because what the pills that we use are usually water pills to push the water out to get the blood pressure down. And the reason is, as I retain salt, I retain water. As I retain salt and water, I build up my blood volume and the blood pressure goes higher. Hmm. So we use the pills that relax the vessels and we use pills that make people pee. Mm -hmm. So that you push, push the fluid out and with that goes the salt and with that the blood pressure comes down. So the primary focus is how much salt do you take? Okay. What's your weight? Can we control your weight? Do you smoke? Please give up smoking. Do you exercise regularly? Let's get you on an exercise schedule. Mm -hmm. So we go on a full lifestyle modification here, you know. How much alcohol do you take? You do drugs. A lot of drugs. And sometimes drugs that you wouldn't even think of. For example, I have seen at least 10 cases a year where people come to me from the primary care clinic saying, blood pressure uncontrolled. I ask them, what are the other pills you take? They'll give me a list. I said, what do you take other than the, your list? Do you take anything else? I take Advil. I take Aleve. I take Ibuprofen. Those drugs raise blood pressure. It's tell them, quit the Aleve, quit the Advil, wow. quit the Ibuprofen. Wow. And there goes the blood pressure perfectly down again. And it's one of the simplest things we can do, yet they were unaware of it. And they didn't realize so, that they were so taking certain pills. So, Doc, so Advil, Motrin. Motrin, and those, Aleve, do, Ibuprofen, do, do, Relefin. Wow. So that actually raises... High dose aspirin. They all raise blood pressure. And so the idea here is to then say, okay, what do you take this for? Obviously, nobody wants to just pop pills. They're taking it for a reason. And they're taking it for maybe arthritis, headache, back whatever, pain, yeah. headache, shoulder pain. I'm a bodybuilder, got big muscles. But I'm taking it because I'm using, you know, my weights and now right. I'm giving pain and I need to get rid of the pain. I'm taking it for those. So you see the, you know, you see a whole spectrum of ages. You see it from the elderly to the young guys. I never knew that. Oh, I've seen an uh, interesting thing. Pizza delivery guys. Kids working for pizza delivery, right? Right. Get a free pizza at the end of the day. Here's a pizza for, you know, manager. Good work job. Good work, guys. I just, I, just ate a, a I, just, I just ate a slice of pizza. Yeah, it's, it's rich in salt. Very rich, so very high salt. Tell me to lay off a pizza. Their mother brings in the kid. I ask him, "What do you do?" <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so, hey, Ivan, I just saw some pizza in there too. No, I'm not trying to stop the sales of pizza here. But I'm saying is, it, you have to watch <laughs> it. it. You know, everything in moderation. The idea here is moderation, portion size control. Let me. Okay. Let Let, let me ask you two questions, right? Let's say. Uh, let's look at um, once you get on these high blood pressure pills. Yes. Um, and also dialysis, you know. Well, that's when your kidneys are failed. If both the kidneys stop working, there's no other option but to think about replacement. Replacements, you can either go into dialysis or you can have a transplant. But my, my, my question was to you, let's, let's talk about high blood pressure. Blood pressure. Can you, can you gradually get off them or are you on blood pressure pills forever? Excellent. Excellent question. Early on, there's a good chance if we work this through in time and work it very early. So the first two or three years, if we work rigorously on it, there's a good chance we can get you off the pills if you do what we're asking you to do. Loss of weight. For every kilogram, every 2.2 kilogram drop in weight, you drop your blood pressure by one millimeter mercury. So we know if you're at 140, at 140, I'm trying to get, let's say you have 160. If the blood pressure systolic, the upper number is 160, and I'm trying to get you to 140, I know you need a 20-point 20 20 drop. To get that 20-point based on weight, I need a 20 kilograms weight loss, which is a 40 kilogram weight loss. Now, we can work on it in many ways. We can either take some of the benefits from some weight loss. I'm not going to push people to lose 40 pounds, mm -hmm. but I can ask for 20. I can ask for 10. We're trying to be reasonable. Right. Okay. So we ask for 10 for the first six months or 10 over the first year. Very gentle. We're partners in this. I mean, I'm not trying to do this alone. I know I'll lose it if I lose my patient. So I'm going to be very gentle. But I also ask them to watch the salt. I also ask them if they're smoking, can we give up smoking? Can you go cold turkey? Is there any way you can look at, ask your primary care to work on cessation of smoking? Then get him on an exercise schedule. Work in all those fronts over six months. We try and see what benefits we can get. Hmm. We also now, you've got bariatric surgery in town. We also try and see, okay, if you're 400 pounds, if the patient's 500 pounds, 300 pounds, we talk to them saying, have you ever thought about going into a weight management program that's run right out of 52 at PMRI? 
So send them to the weight management clinic, a whole team picks them up, works with them, and then ascertains if surgery is, is the right fit for them. If they see that and they get weight loss through surgery, you can also see the blood pressure come down. Wow. And then sleep apnea, same thing. If we find that they have sleep apnea, we'll try and put them on the breathing machine. Now you don't see that much blood pressure drop, but sleep apnea per se itself is associated with higher mortality and a higher illnesses or other diseases. So we try and work on many fronts. I mean, once we know that the patient has blood pressure, we also ask the question, what's driving it? Mm -hmm. Maybe they're making too much of a certain hormone. So we do a whole panel of tests to figure out, is it thyroid? Is it the adrenals? Is it the pituitary? Is what's driving his blood pressure? Somewhere an extra hormone is being released, if we can find out. If you just tuned in, ladies and gentlemen, I think this is a very, very interesting topic, um, especially as it relates to our community, um, because so many times we have been grown up on salt, yes. uh, fried foods, yes. Um, yes. a whole fried bunch of stuff. Um, and, and we're going to get into that, um, the different foods that we eat or intake. Um, and, and I think it's interesting, you know, I, what I try to do is educate you on different subjects. You know, I, I want us to expand our mind. Um, sometimes we have doctors on, we may even have a food channel on, um, but we, I think that we have to broaden our horizons rather than just talk about some of the same old stuff all the same time. If, if that, and I think this is an interesting subject because I guarantee you everyone who's watching knows somebody with high blood pressure, Correct. especially in our families, yes. some kidney stones. Yes. Um, had a stroke, um, aneurysm, or heart disease. Uh, and, and so this is what we're talking about, and I hope that you, you have some um, good questions. What, what, um, let's talk about fried foods. I'm, and, and I'm going to be honest, I'd love me some yes. good fried fish or uh, yes. you know, some fried shrimp and, and good foods like that. Is that bad, bad, or is it just, like you said, in moderation? So I have a... What know, again, and also, what about a good glass of wine? Is that okay? Oh, that's a beautiful question. A glass of wine, a glass of red wine, is shown to lower blood pressure. I can't prescribe it for you. Oh, for real? I think I, think, I, think I, 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 think I, I think I overdo it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you said one glass. <laughs> one glass <of> wine. <laughs> okay. One glass of red wine. White wine doesn't carry the same benefits as red wine does. There's something in the red wine. And you know, we now have people selling pills called resveratrol. No, 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 I didn't and know people that. People have those pills. That resveratrol is an extract out of wines, which we feel is what uh, enhances longevity. So, the, so we have, I think, uh, some good substances in wine that do lower blood pressure. Well, so I got the, glass Well, I do have the right idea, ladies and gentlemen, about wine. I just gotta do it in moderation. Moderation. Okay. It's always in moderation. <laughs> right. You know, I can't. You know, it's like Norm. Okay, one glass is bringing it up, but four of them is taking it up. Correct. You know, so I can't. Absolutely. Well, I was joking, true. man. No, no, you're absolutely right. Blood pressure <laughs> goes up if, if alcohol intake is excessive. But moderation, a glass of wine, will red wine, w does have a positive wow. effect on your health. That's nice So enough. that's something I would recommend. I actually, in fact, even on kidney stones, red wine has an impact on diminishing the incidence of kidney stones. So diminishing uh, episodes of kidney stones. But also, right, on, on the other end, right? On other things don't, well. don't, don't, But don't the red wine also add to your weight because of the sugar? I don't know that. I, I, I don't think so. You're There's talking to a doctor sugar. here. I, I'm, I understand, so I'm not saying I no. am the doctor. But, <laughs> <laughs> but Norm, I think that it's not much sugar in red wine. I'm glad you said that, yeah. so. I just, again, I... I mean, if you were talking about sugar, let's talk about soda. Look at the soda. I actually demonstrated in people, to demonstrate to people in my office, I'll say, here's a can of soda. Okay, and here's your own glass of lemonade. Let's try and demonstrate how much of sugar has a, a, a can of soda has. A can of soda is almost like putting 15 to 17 spoons of sugar. How many times have you done that to make yourself your own drink? But somebody else made the soda, you just buy the can, you paid for it, you drink it and you enjoy it. But the amount of sugar in soda is, is, is enormous. Mm -hmm. Enormous amount of sugar and soda and other drinks. People don't realize it. People drink iced tea, which they buy off the counter. Iced tea, enormous amount of sugar. Same thing with all sodas, whether it's Sprite or Mountain Dew or Coca-Cola or Pepsi. It goes across the board. What about, what about juices? Juices are rich in sugar too. Huh. Absolutely. So, so, so it's moderation. Again, it comes to what's the right size. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you an interesting story. When I was a kid, soda was a luxury. Soda was not the norm. 
My father would order a crate of soda only for the guests. And he would tell me to fill up a, a, a glass of soda if we had guests at home. I'd open the bottle, i will fill them the, the glass, and then what was left behind was mine. So wow. I should get some ice in there to lo- le- leave myself some extra soda so I could get it. It was a true luxury. What has happened today is soda is pervasive across the board. We all carry our cans of soda, our bottles of soda, and we're all drinking soda. And if you look at the amount of obesity we have in this country, it's unimaginable. We are, in a way, paying for the curse of affluence. Now, you may not call it affluence because soda, we, everybody can afford. But if you compare it to the Asian countries and look at their intake of soda, soda intake here is huge. Wow. And the sizes of the cans. I mean, in, in, in back in Asia, our sizes are four ounce can, soda can. Here's 12 ounce, three times. You're trying wow. to kill us? I mean, wow. wh- what are we trying to do? Well, that's what they're doing. That's it. That's happening. So we got to educate ourselves and tell our community leaders and community members, saying, guys, please, don't hey, do this to your kids. Hey, Doc, I'm going to take some phone calls on this in a minute. Before we go to the, I want to ask, because um, I came to your event. Um, yes. And, and, and you and I had a conversation. Yes. And, and, and you said you like to be called, um, most folks like to call from Indian descent. Correct. Um, rather than, Indi- yeah. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your culture and, and a little bit about the history of uh, some of the Indians who we get a chance to meet here. So, so when I say Indian descent, I say it for the reasons because, you know, we were ruled by the British for about 200 years or mm-hmm. 300 years. So during that time, a lot of Indians migrated to places where the British ruled. For example, Africa. Mm-hmm. You'll find Indians from Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, Zambia, um, Nigeria, Indians went and settled there, and then they lived there for five or six generations before they migrated to UK or went to Hong Kong. And then when Hong Kong became a Chinese colony or Chinese uh, rule, they, they left from there and went to Australia or came to the US. So there's been a lot of migration of people of Indian origin. In fact, there, there's people who've integrated with the local population mm-hmm. and don't even know that they're of Indian origin. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's happened in, in, in the Caribbean. If you see Guyana, Haiti, Trinidad, Tobago, um, you know, there's a lot of countries I- down the Caribbean that took in a lot of sugarcane workers from India that came to work the farms. Mm-hmm. And, well, and, and then they settled down there. So these are physicians or they are people of Indian origin. And then you have, you have countries where actually the prime ministers or presidents are of Indian origin. For example, Mauritius, mm-hmm. Trinidad, Tobago. You know, so there's countries across the world where you will see that, they, and if you ask them, they say, yeah, we were Indian origin. They're not Indian, they're Indian origin. Okay. So, they, so six generations ago, people came, uh, came and mingled with the local population and immersed themselves into those cultures. What, what was the name of that movie that just got an Oscar? Ah. How true was that to, um, for the Indian? Um, you know, that, that was a very interesting movie. Um, could you it, relate? I could relate to it, absolutely. Okay. Oh, abs- it was a beautifully produced movie. Uh, it, 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 it happens. It was not pulled out of the blue, or it wasn't a, just a story. Um, I could very well relate to every character in that movie. Okay. And I've seen it myself. Okay. Wow. Um, you can open up the phone lines. Um, we, we have the good doctor on, and, and I hope that we'll be able to give you some help with. Um, sugar, uh, um, I guess, kidney stones, kidney, stone, um, kidney diseases, kidney diseases, heart problems, blood pressure, wh- blood pressure. What, what, um, what are co- some of the common? Um, what's the name of some of the pills that most people take for blood pressure and things? That, so, I mean, you could put the um, phone number up if you, if you, if you. Ch- so, so the, the, uh, you know, what's happened over the last sixty years in blood pressure management is very fascinating, and very encouraging. It is high. It is. We have a lot of pills today. We have almost about 150 pills. Are you prescribing too many pills now? No, not really. But it, what's, what's happening is with the onslaught of this epidemic of obesity, we're needing to use more and more and more and more. So but Doc, sometimes you, you might have some, somebody taking three, four, five yes. different blood pressure oh, pills. absolutely. You're right do you, th- do you think that's good? Not good. Not good. But what do you do? Do you leave them there? And if you leave them there, you have the risk, a higher incidence of stroke, dementia, kidney disease, heart disease, But also with all, with all these all these pills, you become a drug addict, you become addicted, man. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Hi. I just, um, Turn your TV down a little bit, please. I just moved out of the room. Can you hear me better now? Yeah, uh-huh. Okay, thank you. First, I want to 
Thomas, um, thank you for the information, but I, I had a question. Um, I guess more of a statement. Can you, can you ask the doctor to say something about belly fat? And uh, another thing I wanted to ask about, does he find, find that there's a lot of opposition from his patients? Because one of my doctors was telling me, my doctor was telling me that, especially the young people, when she tells them not to go to McDonald's, they get mad at her. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Just repeat it. Good, uh-huh. Well, just repeat what well, she Well, she basically was saying, do, um, like when, when a doctor, want, for the younger patients, they get mad if they say don't go to McDonald's and things of that nature. And okay. um, and she was just talking about the whole yeah. obesity thing. Yeah. So, again, without taking names of certain fast food joints, all I can say, um, what I'd like to say to you is, um, food cooked outside of the home, you have no control on it. To make food very uh, attractive, most of us, if we were selling the food, we would add salt and fat to it. The moment you add salt and fat, that food becomes very uh, attractive to people. So high fat and high salt are one of, the, uh, one of the biggest selling points of any food cooked outside your home. You wouldn't do it yourself since you're paying for it, somebody else is doing it. You are going to get a nice meal, which you really enjoy, mm -hmm. but it's going to be very rich in salt and very rich but, but you in, know what? in fat. It's interesting you say that, though. But what, the problem is, all the healthy food, mm -hmm. help people can't afford it. You know what I mean? I mean, they make uh, healthy food, right? More expensive than bad food. That's true. Somebody's waiting. How, how you doing? Welcome to the show. Yeah. You're I'm just wondering. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm wondering if, if your sugar is kind of high and you wanted to get it down real quick. What would you do? What would you do? All right, let me let me go back. Uh, we'll come back to your to answer your question. But the prior caller asked about belly fat, and that was a very important question. Belly fat is a is a marker of obesity. Now, belly fat in women they have hip fat. Hip fat is not a marker of obesity. It is the waistline or the, or the belly fat that demonstrates to us that there's a higher chance of going to have higher blood pressure. We always look at belly fat and we talk about it to our patients saying, this fat is not dead. These cells are speaking to each other. They are producing certain hormones that are driving up the other hormones that drive blood pressure. So more belly fat, more blood pressure going up. So belly fat needs to be, needs to be cut back on. Okay. And we're just trying to distinguish between the male pattern of fat, which is belly fat here. Both me and Norm have some. But the, the female pattern is more on the hips. We're not talking about that fat. Coming back to the, new, to the caller here, asking about how do you get your blood sugars down. Well, you know, that's really, if your blood sugars are running high, you need to speak to the primary care doctor. You need to speak to a doctor. There are many ways to get it down. Obviously, the first thing I would do if I knew and I was checking my own turn blood sugars... Turn your TV down. Turn your TV down, please. If I was checking my own blood sugars and I still don't have a, di a diagnosis of diabetes but I see high sugars, I would certainly go on a weight management or weight loss program, an exercise program, because what exercise does to the body is it sensitizes your body to the effects of insulin. So you don't need a higher amount of insulin to break down glucose. So the best way to take care of sugars that are borderline or new onset high sugars is to go exercise. Exercise is a powerful sensitizer to insulin and helps bring sugar down. But then I would also recommend talking to your primary care doctor. Okay. There are a lot of pills that we use, many pills, one by one in sequence, that will bring down the blood, uh, the, the blood sugar. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Hello? 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 I said hello like 65 times. And plus your phone was up anyway. You, and also, Doc, when you're on my show, don't talk about my stomach. <laughs> speak, speak for yourself. I'm trying to hide myself, too. Yeah, speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, I know my, uh, uh, Kenny Everett is, uh, Kenny from Go Do Aerobics is watching. And, 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 and he's been telling me this for years. Work yes. out, work out, work, work out. out. Absolutely. And, and, I, and, and, and I respect Kenny there so much for that. There is a lot of truth to that. Yep. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Um, hi, um, I have a question for the doctor. Um, I was just recently told by um, my, one of my doctors, a hepatologist I see, that um, I'm having some trouble with my kidneys. Yes. 
Uh, he informed my primary care doctor of this, and even though it's a kind of low, um, he asked me was I on any diuretics, and I told him I am on taking blood pressure medicines. He has me on three blood pressure medicines now. And we discussed this, and she said that she really didn't want to take me off because I do have um, high blood pressure readings at times. Um, I had a stroke in 2000. Hmm. And so the chances of her taking me off and, you know, um, maybe me going into a stroke versus my kidneys going bad, she just wants to you know, kind of wear it out. And I thought about it after we had our talk, and I'm saying, like, well, it's kind of darn if I do and darn if I yes. don't. So what would you suggest in this situation? Yes. Thank you for the call. That, that's, okay. a, that's an excellent question. It's a very complex question. Uh, it has many different answers to it. Let's go back and ask the question, what kind of kidney disease will cause, what kind of liver disease will cause kidney disease? Now, there's a lot of associations, including uh, diseases, that, including liver, um, liver diseases that are associated with hepatitis or with alcohol or with the use of certain long-term drugs. And you may never even know that you have a liver issue that is now driving, that is now complicating, uh, complicating your health status because it's affecting your kidney. It's very common to have diseases of the liver and the kidney together especially when you're using diuretics and other blood pressure pills. Now, sometimes it's an effect of the diuretics, as you mentioned. Now, I, I, that was a wonderful word. You've learned and you got it. I'm very proud of you that you said diuretics. The so diuretics can sometimes change the number or what we measure in the kidney function. So sometimes it's an effect of diuretics and sometimes it's also an effect of some of the other blood pressure pills you're taking. And as long as it's being watched by your doctor carefully and closely, you should be good. We do recommend that when this has happened, that you make contact with the kidney doctor early on than later, because you know, no once, you can't, once okay. it's once it's gone, yeah. the horse is out of the barn. We can't help, but very early on, it's good to make contact at least once a year or once, and then see what what's going on and be reassured. I think you will be reassured that your changes in kidney function are very likely related to the utilization of diuretics and other blood pressure pills. Now let's say it's not. Then we will go ahead and look for what is it that the liver disease is doing in the kidney and we'll try and figure out how we can help in that, on that front. But my guess is that in your case, your elevation in the kidney numbers is perhaps driven by the utilization of certain pills and that's acceptable. And so I think your doctors are doing the right thing. I think you're in very good hands. This, this is good cop. This is a good conversation, man. I hope people are, um, again, appreciate the quality of programming that we try to provide in a different and variety of um, topics. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Yes, thank you for having me on. My question is to the doctor. Um, in the African American community, I, I, have mentioned, I heard you mention earlier um, the uh, different factors that are associated with um, hypertension. But in the African American community, we, uh, we're dealing with high unemployment, dealing with lack of housing, and we're dealing with just a, a, a lack of opportunity. Um, and other problems just piled on top of other problems. My question to you, has there ever, ever been any studies that showed a correlation between um, hypertension and stress? Good question. Thank you. Thank you. That's, a, that's an excellent question. There is a strong correlation between stress and hypertension. Uh, they, I, I don't know of a particular study, but I can tell you that in my practice, we are utilizing a, a certain machine that drops the level of stress by utilizing breathing exercises and we see a significant response. What I need when I use that machine is for patients to be computer literate and be able to utilize the machine the way it is, uh, way the manual says. It basically tones down your rate of breathing. You know, if you do slow breathing exercises, across the world, different cultures have recognized it. This is not si rocket science. A lot of cultures across the world do breathing exercises to lower stress. Hmm. And when you look at their blood pressures, their blood pressures fall. So there is a strong correlation between the sympathetic drive that we have 
and, and, and its output, which is higher blood pressure. So as I rev up myself, fight or flight response, blood pressure shoots up. As I slow down and I go into a mode where I can control my breathing, especially the way I exhale. It's not as you inhale, but it's the slow That's down exhalation. You see blood pressure comes can, can down. You, can you do that throughout the day, just change your whole breathing and slow things? It down? becomes a habit to these people. They grow down from 16 breaths a minute to about 7 breaths a minute. And my patients who utilize this technique wow. have said it's unbelievable that they're doing it. They'd never believed that they could do it, but they've, they have been doing it religiously. Now, it doesn't mean that you need to do the machine all day. Right. You do it twice a day and you do it over a month. It becomes a habit. It's prone. It kind of almost uh, let me, you know, let me take this primes call. you. But but let me let, can you just work on your breathing, walking? I mean I mean besides the machine, you can do it. I any, mean I mean know, like get, are you saying something like meditation? Absolutely. So meditation, you like, you like, yoga. You're starting to think I'm a smart guy now. You are. I mean, I you're, you're, you're going right there before <laughs> I get to it. How you so, know? So 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 yoga. Let me get this call. Welcome to the show. Good evening, Norman. An absolutely wonderful show. Thank I you. truly believe that your health is your greatest wealth. My name is Marla, and um, I'm listening to what the doctor has said. I truly, truly believe that the whiter the bread, the quicker you're dead. Um, uh -huh. There is a, a diet that we need to follow. Americans have the worst diet, um, I believe, uh, probably in the world. Mm -hmm. And that, more than anything else, has pushed us to diseases like diabetes, heart disease, stroke, kidney disease. We really need to pay attention to what we eat. And it is true, Norman, that um, healthy food is very expensive. So the doctor can talk a little bit more about um, some of the things that we probably need to eat versus um, the medication that we're on. Good question. What do we need to know in order to live longer? Thank you so very much. Good question. You know, excellent. You hit it dot on. I, I couldn't agree with you more how you framed everything you said. It's absolutely correct. The wider the bread, the faster you're dead. I've never heard that before, but that's very impressive. Uh, and dot on, uh, you know, we are u uh, utilizing st foodstuffs that are pre-cooked, they're pre-packed, we don't have time. Husband and wife both work, kids come home, we bring something from a restaurant, we eat dinner, get their homework done, go to sleep, do their laundry. I and mean, you know, our lives are so mechanical. As if you look at Europe and the way they, they live, their lives are pretty much structured. And I worked in Europe, mm -hmm. and, and so I got some exposure to the, the way they work. They, you know, they take a break in the middle of the day. They don't have long hours. They're not expected to come to work at 6 or 7 in the morning. Now, it's not like you know, this country is a country full of hardworking people, very hardworking. The hardest working people in the world, that's our biggest asset today. Americans, I believe, I, I've traveled through four systems, you know. So I, I, I believe that I've found the hardest working people in the world right here. But this is what's the problem. What Marla said is that we pick the most unhealthy diets. Now, she was asking what I could suggest. I'm not a dietitian, but what we do usually is we, we break it down to basics and say, okay, can you cut the soda? Can you cut the salt? Can you, you know, lose weight? But your question's more towards diet. And I think we should get a dietitian on, on this show. And, and she could show you, for example, Mediterranean diets are, suppose, are, are, are absolutely marvelous in, in bringing down and controlling blood pressure, heart disease. And that's been demonstrated in several mm -hmm. studies. You go to Mediterranean diets, which is why you're seeing people in this country now getting to hummus, you're utilizing more chickpeas. We, I come from a culture where we don't eat so much meat. I believe the way meat is being produced in this country, um, you know, we're feeding them hormones, we're feeding them salt, the animals are being uh, mechanically or industrially produced, and very quickly, rapid turnaround time, the more you sell, the more money you make. It's a, it's a very commercial organization, so, you know, it doesn't matter what happens to blood pressure, the government's going to pay for it. So wow. you're trying to make money on the side, on that side, but here you have a whole epidemic of high blood pressure, obesity, um, diabetes, which Marla talked about. So we need to get a di 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 dietitian do, do, here. Do, do we flush enough? I mean, do we take an, enough to you know flush our systems out? Take what? I mean, do, do you think we um, fiber? Like, yeah, fiber. And do you need to take more fiber? Or? We do recommend a high fiber diet. How you, how, how you doing? Welcome to the club. Welcome to the show. I'm saying welcome to the club. Hello. How you doing? Yes, I enjoy your show every bit. Um, when it comes to garlic, garlic. lemon, mm -hmm. and why do um, the pills for high blood causes iron to block you? Well, say that again. That iron, the, the 
most of the high blood pressure pills blocks you. Most of the high blood pressure pills, you're saying, movement. block you, blocks your oh, movement. Okay. Right, thank you yes. for the call. So let me uh, say that there are blood pressure pills that cause diarrhea and some that cause high blood pressure, uh, high uh, constipation. So if, if you are having a side effect of constipation, then talk to your doctors prescribing it. You have multiple choices to switch to. So there are pills Hold that will second. not cause, cause the problems that, that our, our caller experienced. So we can pick pills that will not cause constipation or cause you know, problem with bowel movements. Well, I need uh, a question. Uh, I went to my doctor and he told me I have cholesterol yes. uh, problems. But when they gave me the pill and I read it, mm -hmm. they had a sign effect. So in the kidney failure, yes. blood pressure, and they um, all kinds of things. And, uh, um, you, you, uh, basically, um, your kidneys and whatnot, and you can have a, a stroke. So I want to know why they give you this medicine and know that it's going to uh, mess you up. So I took one pill, and I read it, and that was the only thing I took. Okay. And I, I told my doctor when I went back to my doctor, I said, well, I ain't taking that cholesterol pills. I said, you take it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the call. <laughs> yeah, so what happened was uh, he looked at me, and I looked at him. I said, well, I paid for it. You take it. I said, I paid for it. Yeah, let's, let's let the doctor respond. Thank you. Okay, so cholesterol pills do have side effects. I think the, big, the biggest worry I have if I was going to give my father or my brother a cholesterol pill is liver issues. So your doctor must be monitoring your levels, depending on which pill he gave you. Now even cholesterol has, there's at least four different categories, the most common of which is called the statins. I would recommend that if your doctor felt that you should take it, I would say you should take it at a moderate dose at night time and you will not experience any side effects. Most people do get muscle cramps sometimes and that, that doesn't happen if you take it at night time, take it with certain pills um, or like aspirin and with a triscuit. So there's many ways to avoid side effects but you mentioned stroke and you mentioned kidney failure as a side effect of cholesterol pills. It is very, very rare. I have only seen maybe one over the last 16 years with um, high blood with kidney issues that we, we said we, we couldn't prove it but we said let's get you some a different pill because, because with cholesterol but it, but you can have bad and good cholesterol right correct and and, and, and with, with the bad can cause uh, the bad will stroke. cause stroke heart yeah. disease so, yeah. kidney disease so I think you should try and work with your doctor uh, you can even in again you can go back and say I'll try a smaller dose if you're worried about it and let him check you out with a smaller dose and as we repeat your lipid levels which is your cholesterol the good and the bad levels and we see we're not at target we can still push ahead with a, a graduated increase in the dose but not going to a higher dose again I think your doctor I don't know what dose he gave you but if that's your worry we can cut the dose and he, I sometimes even start people on every other day dose and then get to them get them to an everyday dose uh, to try and see if they're comfortable taking it. In cer certainly, we don't want to stress you out. As we said, stress itself is a big provocateur of blood pressure. We want you to be very comfortable doing what you're doing. A and we should work with you together as a team to get you to be very comfortable with what you're taking. You know what I found interesting when you said this earlier? You said some of it even calls heart disease. I mean, yes. I mean it's so much stuff. I mean, yes. but I'm going to take the call. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Yes, I would like to know what can be done about lymphedema and how critical can it get? Did you hear a question? Yes, I got okay. it. Uh -huh. uh, this, is, this is beyond the scope of my practice, but I see a lot of patients with lymphedema uh, where we're trying to use diuretics, which is the water pills, to try and flush the water out, yet not succeeding. I think what we have now in the, in, in the city of Wilmington is a lymphedema clinic. Um, I've seen a few patients who've been to the lymphedema clinic. I think it's at the Riverside Hospital, I think. It is at the old Riverside Hospital location. It's run by Christiana Care. And I think they've had some effective tools 
to take care of lymphedema, but lymphedema itself can be pretty chronic and very hard to treat. It, leads a, it needs a commitment by you and your physician to, to tackle it, and it may take a year to treat it before you see improvements and before you see significant improvement. But it is a very slow progress, and you should not lose heart, and you should continue to try all modalities that are being recommended, including, you know, the same things, uh, weight loss, uh, cut down on the salt, uh, compression stockings, there's some ultrasound therapies, uh, there are newer therapies that they may be practicing at the lymphedema clinic. We we'll try and get to see a specialist in lymphedema. Okay, thank you for the call. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Yes, um, great show, Norm. Thank you. But this this calls for the doctor. Um, I think some of the stuff we can prevent we can prevent uh, for ourselves by what we take in. I think a lot of times we're not getting exercise, and we eat, we're not eating healthy like we should. But um, and a lot of times we eat at the wrong time of the hours of the night, and then we're going to sleep with the with, with the weight on of us on us. But if we can eat and then go for a walk and everything, and consume that, um, consume consume that stuff, then we ain't not taking it in. But a lot of times, it's our own bodies, our own bodies. Uh, um, we're taking in everything and everything. That's a good question. Is there a certain time a night that you probably should not eat at a certain point? So he's absolutely right. <laughs> okay. I'm guilty of the same thing as a doctor. I do that sometimes, and I know I'm getting myself into trouble. So. Uh, portion size control. Thank you. And and also timing your 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 uh, your snacking and what you snack on. I think when we do this at night time at twelve o'clock and my wife is asleep, everybody asleep. I tend to grab the wrong things. I'll get the ice cream out. I'll get I get all the wrong things out of the freezer or out of the fridge to eat at that time. Whether it's rich in carbohydrates or it's rich in fats and, what and about, sugar. What about like the sugar-free um, desserts and sugar-free so forth? So the, Norm, the sugar-free issue is very controversial. You know, my dad <coughs> buys sugar-free ice cream and thinks he can gobble up a whole can of it and because it's sugar-free and fat-free. Now remember, these are all FDA uh, guidelines and these are all, you know, again, the companies go around it. So again, when they say it's sugar-free, they're, they're calling something not a sugar because the FDA doesn't recognize it as a sugar, but it still may be a sugar. Wow, that's okay? deep. That's interesting. It's just what we define as sugar. Sugar is glucose, but what about fructose and hexose and so many other forms, xylitol and all these things and chewing gums that is a sugar-free chewing gum. You know, th those things, just because the FDA does not call it sugar doesn't mean they're not sugar. It's just wow. not the chemical structure of sugar. Wow. That's so we got to be careful when we say the sugar-free business. This can get you to big trouble wow. because we tend to overdo things you know it's sugar yeah, because, free fat yeah. free let me get three three scoops of the stuff so then, then so we'll just because it's sugar free or fat free don't mean no it is. don't do that wow yes. how you doing welcome to the show hello hello how you doing yeah yeah i had a question but he just answered it most of it. Uh, i was just wondering about the diet sodas yes yeah uh, that's and, a great uh, question and like and like if you go to your doctor, right, and you got a pain or something, I was listening to you guys say about the ibuprofen and the Motrin. Yes. All right, if you got blood pressure, why would he prescribe that if you got a pain, if it's going to raise your blood pressure? Good question. Yes. Thank, I, I mean, I didn't even know that. This, that's why this show is so good. <laughs> Thank you for the call. How you okay. doing? Welcome to the show. Hello? Hi. Hi. Sorry. Um, my question is, will some blood pressure medicines cause you to really the coughing, I mean, to the point of literally choking and just chronic, chronic cough. I have that issue. Yes. Good. And I'm going to turn the TV down so I can hear, so don't say anything for a second. Okay. <laughs> but at least you follow directions. <laughs> no, that's a great question, what you asked. I think that should be a warning to all patients that take blood pressure pills, that if you're having choking or a chronic cough, Please call the doctor who prescribed it back right away because the pill needs to be stopped. So if you're one of those patients having that issue, stop the pill tonight. Do not take it anymore. Please call your doctor. And there's many others to choose from. And sometimes this can, I, I have even seen patients lost. I have lost patients when this was not recognized and not reported. It's very important that you communicate to your physician. Whatever you're going through, even though it may, see, it may feel silly, as this lady said, you know, you have a chronic cough. 
That pill that you're taking for blood pressure may be a reason of wh why you're having that chronic cough. I see it all the time. My patients tell me, I stop the pill, move on to a newer form or a different pill, and the cough is gone. Choking too is a very worrisome sign. If you're choking when you take a blood pressure pill and later on you notice choking, please do not take that blood pressure pill. But call your physician, tell him, let them note it in your allergies. because You should never be then put back on that pill again. Hey, Doug, before I take this call, I want to give a plug, a shout out to you. You said you have the only kidney stone or, or some kind of... Correct. Uh, um, so what I run here is a specialized clinic for hypertension, which is for complex hypertensions where where uh, my other physician friends are having problems with poorly controlled blood pressure or sudden spikes in blood pressure or blood pressure that comes on and, and, then, and then leaves the patient with issues that they, they don't know how to deal with or complications of blood pressure therapy. That's when we take the patients in, evaluate them thoroughly, metabolically, blood tests, kidney tests, do the whole work. And where's this at? This is at St. Francis Hospital. Okay, so... So right so, in town. So could someone come to St. Francis and, and look you up and ask you answer yeah, that? All you need to do is Google my name, Malhotra, you know, kidney doctor in put, Delaware, put, uh, you'll put, get Put it. the doctor's name up there again. But, but more importantly, as you said, we also run the only kidney stone clinic in, in, in the state of Delaware where we are now, I think we have about 550 to 600 patients um, for kidney stones. And our, our rate of recurrence has dropped down significantly. This so is great. How you doing? Welcome to the show. We got time for like a, a couple more calls. I, I just want to say this, Norman. I just spent 20 minutes with my sister uh, on the telephone about changing her diet. And this is what I told her. That which you kill in order to eat will turn around and kill you if you eat it. Well, wow, thank you. Wow. Well, we're getting some, um, you're, you're, you, you know, again. Um, How you doing? Welcome to the show. Hello? Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Norman? Yeah. I have a question. I would like to know when somebody comes to the doctor and they give you all these diagnoses of what you need to do, when they come back and they haven't done it, can the doctor tell I'll them put the doctor's been, name up there, please. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Can they tell that they haven't been doing what they've been doing? Say that again. I'm sorry. I missed it. Okay. You go to the doctor and he give you all these diagnoses yes. for this high blood pressure or whatever. Hello? Yeah, yeah. we're listening. Go ahead. Okay. When you come back, they give you everything you're supposed to do. When you come back, can they tell that you haven't been doing what you were supposed to be doing to cure your problem? Probably because your blood pressure's still up, right? Well, yeah, yeah we can we can test it out. Usually, we, we we trust our patients. We trust them to have faith in us just the way we have faith in them. We know that we're going to work together as a team, and you got to be open about whatever you're doing because once I know it, I can find a way around it. Okay. Uh, thank you, Doc. What an incredible Great. show, man. Thank you. You know, and um, again, here you go. You, you got Dr. Ron Mothra. How you? Malhotra. 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 Yeah. So look, man, if I go eat some of that good India food, which I like, you know, ah. it's a little spicy, <laughs> <laughs> I guess eat it in moderation. 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 That's right. Moderation. That's the key. That's the key. I, I hope everyone enjoyed the show. I, I hope mean, so. Thank you. It this was a was, pleasure being here. No. Well, you know, I, I think that, Doc, we, we have to educate our community about different things. Absolutely. And, 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 like, I educate them about politics and yeah. about other things. I mean, yeah. why not educate people about our health? Absolutely. And, Absolutely. and, and also, I'm not sure if I heard it right. Um, I, I, I thought I heard someone on the shows earlier say, Buddy Gray passed away. If so, um, I certainly send my condolences out. He knew my entire family, my mother and father and everyone. We would talk about that a lot, and I, and, and I want to send my love out to the Gojo Aerobics family, uh, Brother Rashid Mustafa, Buddy Kenny Everett, and just all the guys who into karate who knew Buddy. Um, just send my love. Good show, Doc. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank we got to do this more more often, man. I'll do it anytime. Just yeah, tell me. I'll you, live a mile away. I, 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 I got to get on a good diet, too. Yeah. I, I mean, I know Kenny wants to I got to get more. myself in. But did, did talk about your stomach, not mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, look, yeah. and, and congratulations to everyone from the uh, C uh, City Democratic Party. Um, I did take a picture of Theo and uh, Gary Hutt before the, before the show. And next week, Jack Booker will be the host because I won't be here. And uh, uh, Jack has an inter interesting group of folks, and we have some um, other good shows coming on. This was good, man. Good, very educational. You the man, man. You. Doc, you like, look, push. Man. Bam! Hold up, don't take the mic. You stand up with the mic on, man. Take it off? Yeah. Were well, you going to take it home? No. <laughs> I'm out of here.